Hey guys! So today um, we're going to have a look at this graph. Um, this graphic was um, drawn and explained to me in the clinic in Thailand uh, where I am being treated with a cap called plasma device. And Jay, who has explained and drawn this graphic for me, has over 10 years of experience um, treating patients with topical steroid withdrawal. And in those times, he learned a lot about the condition. He observed things very well. Um, he has a medical background, and um, uh, he knows a lot about the skin, um, skin healing, wound healing, uh, infections, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so this chart is uh, looking at the different phases of um, topical steroid withdrawal process. And this chart shows you a little bit how the healing can be with treatment and without treatment. Um, so, first of all, on this X we have the time, and on this X we have uh, the skin healing in different phases. So actually you can here uh, see that it starts with phase number one, but maybe I can say also something about phase zero, <laughs> which I placed there myself, uh, which is uh, the time before you start topical steroid withdrawal. So in phase zero is where most people notice that the creams stop working. Um, they have an allergic reaction to the cream, or they see that their spots get bigger and bigger, and they feel different, like much more hot, um, and um, very, uh, very red, very bright red. Um, some people develop sun sensitivity, photosensitivity. I had that too in my case. At least for them, there are alarm bells that say, hey, something is going wrong. Um, it's not compared anymore to my original rash, um, for which I start using the topical steroid creams. Um, so this phase zero is, is also known and, and um, described by some people as topical steroid addiction. Um, yeah, I don't find this term for me covering the load for me personally. I find better to say it was topical steroid dependency uh, and not meaning that the original rash was dependent on the steroid cream because that you have from day one. Um, but that the normal healthy skin around those spots uh, and, and much bigger, bigger areas um, also become dependent on the creams for um, just looking normal. Um, during prolonged use, what, what happens if you, you use the topical steroid creams for a long, long time, and especially the very high potency, which can be 100 and 100 times more potent than the lower potencies, um, is that the skin is thinning, and thinning over time, so it gets more and more thin. So of course, less strong and um, less able to do its normal function. Um, also, the proliferation rate of the skin cells, so basically the making new skin cells is slowed down or stopped completely by the use of the steroid creams. And so the skin weakens over time. And um, at a certain point, the creams do calm down inflammation, but mm, the skin is so much weakened that if you stop using the cream, basically the skin cannot uh, function healthier normally on its own and you will go into topical steroid withdrawal. Um, so topical steroid withdrawal is very different than the normal rebounds effect you would expect if you stop topical uh, steroids. For the original rash, you might expect that um, there's a rebound, it only lasts a couple of weeks, and the skin comes back to the original rash you had. And with topical steroid withdrawal, it goes in something completely different um, with many different symptoms. And um, um, uh, such as a full body rash and a lot of oozing, um, a lot of flaking, um, insomnia, um, not able to control the body temperature, um, can be very stinking smell and odor from the body, uh, muscle spasms, oedema, etc. Um, <clears throat> I had another video uh, talking more about the different symptoms of the syndrome. So let's look at the chart. Um, so here we see that there is a phase one 
and this is uh, the phase where you stop using the creams and you decline your skin declines and goes worse and worse and worse very fast so usually um, this in uh, within one or two weeks uh, you you are in a, a quite um, intense state and you're gonna be very ill and you're gonna have lots of symptoms so the deepest point should be normally within uh, four to eight weeks uh, I know that for a lot of people, this is um, this time of the first phase takes much longer. Um, so I have met, I have read many reports of people saying that three months, four months were the lowest points, and even um, six months, seven months in um, that that was the lowest points, and that then after that they had slow recovery. Um, so why this is? Why this is? Um, very many different timelines between persons. Of course, it has to do with the uh, how much steroid cream you have used, how long time, how strong the potency, how much grams per tube that you used. Mm, this is a indicator of uh, how strong or how long and how uh, severe the topical steroid withdrawal will, uh, will be. But I think also here there are other factors into play, and um, this is all still quite a question mark because we don't have uh, any um, scientific research. Um, but I think that, um, yeah, my guess is that also other factors are in play, such as if people are sleeping at night uh, or not, because this is the time where there is most um, healing of the skin between 10 p.m. and around roughly 3 a.m. Um, if people have stress, if they can control scratching, if they live with a certain irritant or allergy around them, I think this will all prolong this, this time from phase one. I call this the hell phase because um, it's extremely, extremely challenging. People get usually get housebound, some get bedbound. Um, you need care from family members. Uh, sometimes you have to be carried to the bathroom. Um, uh, some people have extreme amounts of oozing. They have to sleep on a towel or five towels to just catch the oozing at night. Um, uh, yes, you need to clean your bed and your house uh, very thoroughly every day. Uh, yeah, yeah. You're, you really are very sick in this phase and you really need help. And it's very, very challenging. Uh, for me, the days and nights were never so long as in phase number one. Um, I almost couldn't cope. Yeah. Um, so, at a certain point, you, you, you have a, reached a deepest point, and then you start noticing uh, some improvement. And you start noticing that your skin is getting a little bit more thicker and resistance, that you can scratch yourself a little bit without immediately breaking the skin. Uh, you might get a little bit less oozing um, and you start noticing that you have probably more flaking and that your flakes will become a bit smaller. So mm, usually after the deepest point, there is a, a month or so of pretty fast increase. Um, again, this is all influenced by if there are irritants around you or not, stress level, sleeping, uh, overall health, etc. And then you will go into um, phase two, which you which is a line slowly, 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 slowly coming up, going up. Now, as you can see in the chart, there is here time, but it doesn't state what kind of time. It doesn't state here anything in months or years. And this is because this healing process is super individual and it, the healing time is very, very different from person to person. We know mild cases of topical steroid withdrawal um, and they heal within sometimes six months, one year. Um, and, and then we might say average healing time will be something like three or three to five years. Um, but there are definitely cases that are much and much longer. And there are even known some cases that cannot heal within their lifetime. So they always have some um, yeah, symptoms of topical sim uh, steroid withdrawal left in their life to deal with. Um, so basically, the second phase. The second phase is where your skin is still very severely damaged. It's open, you will have 
wounds, a lot of flaking. Um, and it's very obvious when you look at your skin that um, topical steroid withdrawal is going on. Usually here the heaviest symptoms are gone or a lot milder. So for me, for example, I could here regulate my body temperature again, the muscle spasms uh, were gone, and my body odor changed back to normal, my oozing was a lot less severe, and I started having a lot more flaking. So you can see that this line is going up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. So this is what usually happens during the healing process. It goes to inflammatory state, flaking state, healing state, inflammatory state, um, uh, flaking state, healing state, and so on, but you will have a slow upgoing line. So without treatment, this will go up and up, but slowly, very slowly, uh, because the skin thickens very slowly, and it all has to do with the cell rejuvenation rate, the cell proliferation rate, uh, in combination with thickening of the skin, um, the cell proliferation rate is very low because of the use of the topical steroid creams. And so the thickening of the skin also goes very slow. Um, so you can see that with treatment, and this is then the treatment with the capical plasma device, um, the healing goes a lot, a lot more faster. So in the timeline, as you see, um, your healing time will be a lot less long using treatment. Um, the cold plasma device, what it does is uh, it helps the um, cell proliferation rate speed up again, so new sin scales will be made much faster, and this will also help in uh, thickening the skin much faster. It also keeps in control uh, bacteria, fungi, etc. Um, now you see that I have drawn here several lines, and this we could also do with this long line. That there are several outcomes. There is uh, an outcome which is, um, let's say, um, the fastest, the, the most positive one, and uh, this uh, healing will happen when there are no delays. And there are many factors that can delay topical steroid withdrawal healing process. So this can be um, excessive uh, scratching or rubbing or hitting. It can be things like uh, stress, not enough sleep, alcohol use, um, uh, menstrual period for the ladies. It can be an, an illness. Um, it can also be allergies that are around you in your surrounding, irritants being around you in your surrounding. It can be that you get um, an infection in the skin, so a viral a bacterial or fungi infection. This will all slow down your healing rate. So there is a healing rate which is optimum and there might be other healing rates, rates that I could draw underneath this one as well, um, which are healing rates which are influenced and delayed by other processes. Um, so at a certain point you can go to phase number two, the healing state. In this state your skin already looks normal again, but it's not healed yet. You still have um, a very, uh, your skin is still thinner than, than normal healthy skin. Um, and although it may look normal, you are very easily have a fallback in this state. Um, so in this state, many times people fall back. And um, this is why they say, Topical steroid withdrawal is so unpredictable. Um, but many people also don't know that there are many triggers to have a flare-up, eh, to fall back into topical steroid withdrawal. Um, and this is more education about this, is, I think is helpful, um, because it's very helpful if you can recognize the things that can make you uh, fall back again. So some of those uh, fallbacks people know, you know, know that they, they know if they have more stress that, that the skin um, falls back again, not enough sleep or alcohol, they know a lot of time the menstruation period is known. Um, um, of course, scratching and rubbing and hitting, people can find out from themselves that this is not very good for your skin. Um, I think the most problematic here, and this is also what Jay says, uh, Jay taught me that in this phase, the most problematic is irritants. 
Um, so, of course, allergens uh, are problematic too, but a lot of time people know what they are allergic for, and if they are allergic to something, also the reaction of the skin is very fast. Um, so they might go to visit a friend, and they have a dog or a cat, a pet running around, and they get immediate inflammation. And then they know, ah, okay, I can't do this. So the allergens and also the high-level irritants are usually not the problem in this phase because you can recognize them very easily. So for me, I never reacted to dust, but during my topical steroid withdrawal process, I react as crazy to dust. So learning this, I just have to avoid um, places with carpets. I can't sit on um, sofas made of fabric. And I know easily can avoid this and clean my house better. Uh, it's a lot of time the middle and low uh, level irritants that that are causing problems here because they are very difficult to identify and people never used to react to them. So uh, we talk here about um, things like washing detergent, um, air refreshers, perfumes. Um, it can be uh, chemicals in the air from painting, from glue. Um, even from tape, yeah, when making a package for somebody and you use this thick tape and there's a glue smell in the air, I flared up very badly from that. Um, uh, it can be from a printer that is maybe in your office space, um, etc. Also in this phase, the reaction is doesn't have to be very quick. Uh, we know cases where uh, somebody bought a printer and during the first month there was... the the skin could still cope, but at a certain point, um, it got too much for the sensitive skin in phase number, phase number three, and the person started having uh, flares and fallbacks again. Or there's one story of somebody who bought a new couch, and in the first six weeks, there was no problem, but then um, slowly started reacting to the chemicals on the new couch. So this is why the irritants in this phase um, cause the most problem, because they're very, very difficult to identify, and somebody has to be really conscious and really aware. So then you can go to phase four. Also here, the skin looks normal and looks healthy, um, but you can still have fallbacks, especially when some couple of triggers are combined. For example, um, you slept... You didn't sleep very well a couple of nights in a row. You went out, you had some alcohol, and you have your menstruation. Then you might flare again. Or uh, you might encounter an irritant, and you scratch too much because you're more itchy again. Um, and at the same time, um, you got an illness. So uh, these, these things combined can make you have a flare-up again. At a certain point, you can go to phase number five. And here, your skin is already almost back to normal, um, but still you can flare, but it's more difficult. Um, uh, if you combine uh, a couple of um, uh, a couple of these uh, things I mentioned that can delay or trigger uh, your skin again, uh, for example, what's, and then in a quite heavy, yeah, for example, when people go through a divorce and they go through a very stress period or, uh, at their work or somebody in the uh, dear to them uh, died and then combined with maybe um, refurbishing, redoing the home and there was glue in the air or paint in the air and they can still have a fallback. Um, yeah, so I think this explains mostly this graphic and the different healing phases of a topical steroid withdrawal um, explains something about the delay you can have of different types of triggers and you can see that with the treatment you can heal a lot faster. Um, I hope I, I got this well explained. I'm doing my best to get this sort of information out there, even if it's a very low tech. <laughs> and if you have any questions, you can uh, just ask me. Okay. Much luck on your healing journey. Ciao, ciao.